thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul is commended for his labor in the Lord, all that he was doing for God, and he reminded everybody else what he felt in his heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, he said, I am what I am only by the grace of God. I often reminded myself when I read this scripture of the uh, cartoon Popeye that I grew up with when I was a kid. Popeye would say, I am what I am, and that's what I am. People in the world often boast of who they are because of what they did, what they have accomplished, what they have. My friends, we are what we are only by the grace of God. Grace is often, I'm reminded of an acronym, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 tells us that God has given us all the spiritual blessings that we need. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10 tells us that God that we love and serve is the God of all grace. And he has given us an eternal, to, eternal inheritance in Christ. As I get older chronologically and spiritually, I could tell you honestly from my heart, and I humbly say this, I don't see myself as a better person and yes, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 tells us we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But often I see myself for the vile, sinful person I am. However, when we look at our sins and how guilty we are, it should draw us to Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24 tells us that the law, God's word, reveals us for who we are as sinners. But it is a tutor to teach us of our need to come to Christ. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 tells us that we are all like sheep have gone astray, each to our own way. But God has laid on upon, upon Christ the iniquity, in, the iniquity or the sins of us all. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 tells us that Christ became sin for us who knew no sin. You see, the transaction has been made, my brothers and sisters, our sins have been imputed to Christ and his righteousness has been imputed has been imputed to us. John chapter 10 verse 11. Jesus said that he is the shepherd and the good sheep and the sheep listen to his voice. Sheep are probably the most dumbest of animals. They're very ignorant, very low informed, so to speak. They just follow the wind. They go wherever they please. And by nature, they'll just walk right into a wolf's mouth, their enemy, and be devoured. And that's how we are, spiritually speaking. We will just continue to go our own way and wind up in hell. But Christ laid down his life for the sheep. He is our good shepherd. My friends, today, we need to be reminded of this, that much of the 1 Corinthians 15 speaks about is the resurrection of Christ. And if you read Romans chapter 6, a good part of that chapter, when people are baptized, we are told that they go down the new person in the water and they've raised up, resurrected the new person in Christ. Romans 6.14 tells us that we are no longer under the dominion of sin and the law, but now by grace we are what we are through Christ. The evidence of God's grace in our lives will be seen as we go down in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 a little further, verse 33 says that bad company corrupts good morals. The grace of God will be seen by the company we keep. I can remember as a young man growing up in the streets, the company I kept. And there's an old saying, you are the company you keep. My kids, my daughters are both in college. Sometimes I'll speak to them about the company they're keeping. And I'm thankful to God that they have gone to college, uh, both of them in prestigious schools and they're learning administration and medical. But they are what they are to an extent because of the company they keep. Ultimately, they are what they are because of how they were raised. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 says, you train up a child, how parents train up their children. That's the way they're going to be when they get older. But as children get older, as we get older, Quite often, we pick up the traits of those that are around us. If we follow the world, the people of this world, we're going to think like the world. 
But if we are following God's grace, we'll be around people that are godly, people who are going to encourage us, motivate us, and point us to Christ to live for him more and more. Another evidence of God's grace is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, a little later on down in the chapter, verse 58. The Word of God says that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is something that is personal to me as I go on social media, do these devotional videos. Honestly, sometimes in your, in your flesh you can get discouraged. Uh, there are times when I've been blocked, I've been flagged, I've been reported, sometimes even threatened by people. Um, a lot of times people have comments that are not very nice, that are sent to me, sent to me privately. And yet, this promise of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, where it tells us that our labor in the Lord is not in vain, encourages me that God's grace in my life and what we do as followers in Christ does not go in vain. It produces the effects that God sent it out for. God's word will go out as if Isaiah chapter 55 tells us. I would encourage you to read verses 10, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 to 11 where it speaks about how God's word will not return void, that God will accomplish the purpose for which he sent his word. My brothers and sisters, your life today is only by God's grace found in Jesus Christ. God gives his grace to the humble. You often hear me say Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34, James chapter 4, verse 6, and 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 tells us, that God gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. Humble people are those who see their need for God. Humble people are those who see the needs of others more than their own needs. Proud people only think of themselves. Proud people are only about themselves. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 tells us that we are to go to the throne, throne room of God's grace, which we, where we could find help in our time of need. My friends, sometimes we need to go through back the corridors of time and look at how God's grace has helped us in our time of need. Sometimes in life we have to be afflicted. Sometimes we have to be brought low. I would encourage you to read Psalm 119, verses 67, 71, and 75. Three verses, four verses apart, would speak about how at times we have to be afflicted in order that we won't go astray. We have to be brought low so that we can see the highness of God in our life. God bless you all this day. Stay strong in Christ.